Alrighty, we are playing in a Vintage Cube Feeder League today. What that means is it's a single limb cube uh, league where you have to go 4-0. If you go 4-0, you get a token, and that's how you join the 64 player drafts that queue you for Cube Worlds. Uh, <laughs> it's one of the worst packs I've ever seen. I think I'm going to take Containment Priest. It's great in the White Weenie deck. It's good against some of the unfair decks. And on, honestly, I don't know what else you could take here. Dothy, Voidwalker, Lotus Cobra, maybe Green Suns now. I'm just going to take Containment Priest. Oh, whew. this is tough. I wish I had gotten to first pick Ajani, second pick Gut, because that's such a sick combo. I think I'm just going to take the Ajani. And maybe I'll wheel uh, Jack Rabbit. Seems like a reasonable plan. I think Ajani's pretty good. And especially if you get it early, you can pick up ways to use it. Gut is like one of the best cards ever with Ajani, because turn two Ajani, turn three Gut, sack the cat token, flip the Ajani, then zero the Ajani, you have a red permanent play. It is disgusting. But I still think Ajani is the first place I got to start there. And then I think I've got to just take Wooded Foothills here. It's a red fetch at least. And uh, that could potentially turn into a red white fetch or I could be white green or something. Who knows? I, I just don't really, I'm not going to take Narset, Glorybringer, Archangel Elspeth. These cards I think are too weak to consider here. This pack has, I mean, Necromancy has the best card. I think I'm just going to take Glimmer Lens here. I don't really think taking Necromancy here really makes that much sense. I do like me a Lumberjack, but uh, Glimmer Lens is a good card, especially if you get some one drops. Turn one drop into Glimmer Lens on two is a really strong start. If you Flicker Wisp Glimmer Lens, you get another token. There's some stuff there. Ooh, nice. Plateau makes Wooded Foothills excellent. And... Plateau is one of the best cards for the red-white deck. They really can't afford to stumble on mana, so that, that is great. And then I'll take Elite Spellbinder here. I don't know that I'm going to be red, but I like having the option to, and I think Virtue of Loyalty, pretty replaceable card. All right, and here, look, we can just take Oliphant. I think that's better than Sculler. I do like Sculler, but we have a good start to uh, kind of an easy red splash, and there's a lot of red cards I'd be interested in. Plus, with a Johnny in your deck, it's really nice to just have a red permanent or two so that when you do flip a Johnny sometimes, you get to nug them for a bunch of damage. Meanwhile, we've got Jetmere's Garden, Guardian Scale Lord. I don't really need the Jetmere's Gardens. I'm pretty good on red fetches. I have a red-white duel and two ways to fetch it. Legion Extruder is kind of interesting. You can sack the Glimmer Lens to it. Also, playing a Johnny and then casting Legion Extruder, kill the cat flip a Johnny, make a cat. That actually sounds kind of reasonable. Like getting to shock your own cat, but then flip a Johnny and then shock or bolt something. Yeah, I think that's pretty good. And here we've got Angie's Ravager or Timeless Dragon, or I guess maybe Tribal Flames. Hmm. Not too impressed with any of these really. I think I'll take the Ravager. I just don't really like the dragon. Oh, Jackrabbit Wheel. I love it. That is great. And then here, Archangel Elspeth is a great combo with Jackrabbit. It's actually disgustingly good. Both Elspeths are. If you just play this, even as like a 1-2, two, two counters on it, it becomes flying. You attack, make three tokens. The other Elspeth jumps it and gives it plus three, plus three. So, all right, we got a plan here. Ooh, we're already in good enough shape that with uh, fixing that I don't think I need the Savai Trium. And Absent, if you have the mana for it, is a pretty good card. Sadly, Voldar and Epicure, I know I'm not going to get a, a gut, so that's not as exciting. Oh, last 14th pick, Flame Slash. I don't know that red's open exactly, but that is a late Flame Slash, and white does seem to be fairly open, so I think this is a pretty reasonable place to be. And then I'll last pick, Reign of Filth. All right. What do we got? What do we got? Uh, Kind of bricked again. I think I'm just going to take... Oh, did I... Did I get something else out of there? No. I think I'm just going to take Scalding Tarn. I think Lelia's fine, but you don't need more three drops. I don't know. I'd rather just have another red-white land. And maybe if I get another, if I end up wanting to splash a different color, having all the fetches helps enable that as well. I just think Lelia is, is okay, but has fallen off a bit. Hmm. This is an interesting pick, too. I think I'm going to take Flage. I really do like Luminarch Aspirant. It's also nice with Jack Rabbit. But I have two fetch lands and Oliphant. I feel like this is actually a pretty good Flage deck. So I think I would rather take Flage here. It just seems like a, a deck that will be pretty good at bringing Flage back and it does have the mana for it. I do like Aspirant, but I have a bunch of twos already too. So Flage also offers something a little bit different. One drops is what I'm missing. One drops and of course something like a Mox, but uh, we don't do that here. <laughs> but yes, I could use some one drops. Any Ocelot Prides? That'd be great. 
All right, there's there's my boy, Sneak Attack. It's okay, I'll take Usher of the Fallen. A good one drop sounds great to me. There's also Mind Collapse and Fire Blast. Not that I'm really looking for those, but I, one of them's gonna wheel at least. Oh, look, now I can take Dragon's Rage Channeler. I mean, I have like Artifact, Sorcery, Instant, bunch of creatures. This is another Artifact. It's another red permanent for a Johnny. And because I've taken two fetches and a plateau, I actually feel pretty good about that. I would love to wheel Detective's Phoenix. I don't think trying to splash Fire Covenant's worth it, but I think Dragon's Rage Chandler is pretty good. Not the dream to take that this early, but you know, what can you do? Uh, here, we've got Ancient Tomb. It's a fantastic card. It's good with Spellbinder. It's good with Jack Rabbit. I mean, Jack Rabbit counts as a three for that. All right, yeah, I'm, I'm in for Ancient Tomb. I think Oust is pretty replaceable, and I've got a bunch of removal. Same with Grim. Ancient Tomb's actually a way to accelerate, though. I'm not the best Ancient Tomb deck yet, but now I can build a little more around it. All right, and here, I don't think I'm going to play any of these cards. What am I most likely to play? I guess Celestial Colonnade. If I open Time Walk, I'd try to splash it. I don't think I'm going to play Karn. I mean, Karn is... Karn, I have like Legion Extruder and I have Ancient Tomb. Yeah, I'm still just going to take Colonnade. Here, I like Robber of the Rich and I like Winds of Abandon. I've got a lot of removal. I'll take Robber here. Roberto. All right, and here, oh, this is pretty easy, Giver of Runes. I just want some more ones. Soul Cauldrons, whatever. Same with Unholy Heat. Bez is fine, but nothing too exciting. Okay. We're uh, not on track to 4 0 this draft. Not without opening something a little bit better. Like, in terms of great cards, we have like a Johnny, good fixing, and a bunch of mediocre stuff. <laughs> yeah, it was going to be tough. All right, and here, Kumano faces Kakazan. If, if your curve's low enough, this card's actually pretty good. Even Interrupter, I don't find to be particularly great. And then here, I'll take a Delayed Blast Fireball. There's some matchups where I'd want that. I don't I don't think uh, this deck's going to play Ephemerate. I don't look like I'm very close to it. All right. I mean, the best thing we could open is like like a Lotus or Mox. You know, a piece of power, but just more specifically, not even one of the blue ones, just like a Mana Acceleration. Like a Mox Ruby or Pearl would be absurd. Uh, all right. So Fire Blast and Mind Collapse are both similar cards. I think I'd rather have Mind Collapse... Sacking one mountain seems a lot better than sacking two. Sacred Foundry would be a nice pickup as well. Wow, that's a late Satya and late Fire Covenant. Well, later Fire Covenant. Um, This actually would be a great Satya deck if I got the mana for it. Yeah, I have a lot of removal. I'm willing to just take Satya. Oh, I'm really glad Showdown wheeled. Okay. Probably don't need Satya then. Showdown's pretty good in this deck. Now that I have four one drops plus like Flame Slash and a bunch of twos. Showdown with Jacked Rabbit. Hmm? Make make a gigantic rabbit. This is just a very mid red white deck, is the thing. Here, not playing any of these cards. All right, pack three. Let's go. My first picks have been Containment Priest and like Scalding Tarn, so there's room room to get better. Uh, all right. Yeah, I mean I'll take Othari or Fiery Confluence here. A lot of the cards I like too, but obviously we're not in the market for those. Really, not what I was looking for. Is another expensive card is not going to help this deck get. The wins it needs, but I am um, that's what I'm gonna take. I kind of think Fiery Confluence might be better just because six to the face is pretty nice and it's four mana instead of five. I don't know, those those are close at least. Alright, and second pick, uh we missed. Cool. <laughs> uh I mean I could take Meticulous Archive if I really wanted to splash this Satya, but I don't really even I guess I'll just take Ghostfire Slice. There's also Elspeth, which is great with Jack Rabbit, like I mentioned. I think Elspeth has a decent chance of wheeling. Also, I'd rather just have another burn spell. I've got a couple fours already. And then here, I, mean, I guess I'm taking Cathar Commando. All right. I don't really see anything else too exciting. Hired Claw. I'm not, not really into that one so much. There's a fetch that doesn't do anything. A remand, a dress. I guess I, uh, I'm in for Loran over Steam Vents. If I took Steam Vents, I could actually splash Satya. Hmm. Because I'd have four blue sources without sacrificing any red or white sources. Okay, I guess I don't mind that. This deck needs a little bit more power, I feel like. It's a bit short on that. Huh, well, at least there's a Sacred Foundry. I do like that. More than Esper Sentinel or Samwise. If either of those came back, that'd be fine. But Sacred Foundry, I just can definitely see having drawing two fetches or a fetch in an Oliphant and wanting a second red-white land to get. Right now we're at 19 land. We need a couple more playables. All right. This deck can mise some wins. Let's try and do that, huh? 
Ooh, and here, I don't mind a Fury. There's also a Figure of Destiny, which would be awesome, but Fury is really strong, and this deck has a lot of red cards. I feel like I'll be able to utilize Fury well. Ooh, Rabble Master versus Staff versus a Surveil Land. I kind of like a Surveil Land here. Rabble Master ha is kind of nice, but I think a Surveil Land will, will, will be good. I have three ways to fetch it, which is pretty strong. Now we're at 17 lands plus Olafon. Yeah, we're, we're going to be fine here. Because obviously the biggest thing you look at is, do I have enough playables? No, it's how good your deck is. And uh, yeah, this deck is just okay. It's got the capability of winning some games. Mog does a great pickup. All right. Now we've got our deck. And don't think I want Poldar and Epicure, Anji's Ravager, Delayed Blast Fireball. Delayed Blast Fireball plus uh, Showdown of the Scalds. Tis a combo. Othari came back. So... <laughs> Red white was just really open. I just didn't see that much great red white. I don't know. It's just all these cards are just okay. Uh, I might play Meticulous Archive. I'm not sure. Now that I've picked up Othari, though, I might not even play Satya. I guess Hired Claw, sure. It's so whenever a lizard attacks. I don't have that many lizards. Because <laughs> if I cut Satya, cut Archive, oh, Rampaging Raptor, sure. Yeah, look, I just play Rampaging Raptor. It's it's fine. Oh, Samwise came back. Yeah, maybe I'd Samwise. I've got a couple fetches. It's good with uh, Shodan of the Scalds or Fury. This is 14 land plus all the fonts. So I have to cut a couple cards here. I can probably cut Mind Collapse is my guess. Legion Extruder is probably not quite there either. Keep most of the creatures and I still have a bunch of removal. Like if you count this, I have six removal spells. Oh, wow. So <laughs> red-white was very open. I just didn't end up with a great red-white deck, which <laughs> is a shame. All right. Well, we're impeaching Raptor out for Rabble Master. Need to cut one more card. Archangel Elspeth's probably my weakest card, but it is good with the Jacked Rabbit. Where'd the rabbit go? Am I losing? Oh, it's over here. Oh, it's an X-Spell. That's why. <laughs> Because mm. right now I'm at 16 lands. Yeah, yeah, I guess I'll cut the Elspeth. I think that's okay. Elspeth's pretty nice with Goblin Rabble Master, too. Hmm. I could cut Kumano Faces Kakazan, but I feel like one of my best ways to win is just one drop into two drop. All right. I'll, I think it's the, my weakest expensive card. So let's do that. Let's cut Elspeth. Five and five. Yeah, that sounds fine to me. All right. Well, let's do it. All right, time for round one on the draw. This deck is also gonna struggle a little bit on the draw. Though I will say for not having any power, being a red-white low curve deck is actually a fine place to be. All right, turn two commando or unexpectedly absent leading into a turn four Othari. Luris, companion, oh, it's gonna be a buy then because according to my comments, Luris is terrible. So this should be easy. They did mulligan. Okay, Planes Go. Well, I'm just going to go Planes Go, Planes Go, and then decide if I'm casting Absent or Cathar Commando. Most likely uh, Cathar Commando, but we'll see. Agatha's Soul Cauldron. Huh, all right. That's, that's a thing, I suppose. Huh. Yeah, that doesn't change anything. I guess, <laughs> I guess I could next turn cast... Kumano plus Absent, and then turn four Othari, and it gets the counter off Kumano. Yeah, that's kind of nice. Are they putting Luris into hand? Wow. Not the strongest draw from there. And maybe the, maybe the Luris haters have, have something right. All right, I need to stop drawing lands. I mean, if they don't have an answer to Othari, I just win. But I am getting a little concerned that if they kill Othari, I don't have a whole lot of backup. I don't think putting Col Cauldron on top does much. Like... It makes them draw it again, which is nice, because it's not a very good card, but I don't think it's a... Uh... And they might not have another land, because they wouldn't have played Silent Clearing, yeah. All right, well, putting Mother Runes on top sounds great. Yoink, and then... Let's slam Othari and hope they don't have a removal spell. It's a 4-4, even. <laughs> oh, they have Reprieve? Oh, sure. That's fair. I mean, Othari's coming back next turn. They, they might hit a land drop now because they're drawing. They drew the Mother of Runes off Reprieve. 
Man, silent clearing is such a beat. <laughs> just... It's just really, like, I'm not saying you shouldn't play it. I play these lands sometimes too, but when you have to play them as one of your early lands, it's just so painful. Really? Their best player is Mother of Runes? Okay, they got something else as well. An Intrepid Adversary. All right. I think I'm still fine here. Unfortunately, I can't play Robber and Othari, but I'm going to get to attack with four creatures this turn. And... I think I'm battling with the Cathar Commando, even if even if they can trade off. I can't kill their Agatha's Soul Cauldron, but I'm not that worried about that. Also, any creature that trades off here with my creatures gets exiled because of uh, the text on Etching of Kumano. Pretty relevant against the Luris deck, I will say. All right. Uh, yeah, that's fine. They take some damage. They go to six here. They can eat the Cathar Commando and make their Mother Runes into a disenchanter, which does let it kill the etching of Kumano, but I'm not super worried about it. Council's judgment, okay. There goes Othari, huh. I guess I can attack with all three of my creatures and put them to one, so any sort of action wins me the game. I, I really have drawn a lot of lands here, but I still think I'm mostly fine, especially since I'm even gonna get a card off of Robber here, though most likely it's gonna be a, a land here. Just they, they've drawn a lot of spells and very few lands, so the, the ratio is closer. I'm not saying most likely, but it's probably it's closer to 50% or whatever, right? They have they had 29 cards and or 28 cards before exile to 29, 14, so it's like half land, yeah. Alright, well they get to go to one. And I pass the turn. I get, I'm glad I have the surveil land here. Now their land doesn't work anymore. <laughs> One, two, Jackrabbit. It's going to be a two, three in a second. I mean, that's a relatively fast clock with Soul Cauldron and Mother of Runes, protecting it and all that. Okay, Elegant Parlor. All right, Glimmer Lens. That cycles, but it cost me both my creatures. I don't really think that's a good idea. Samwise, that's interesting. Uh, yeah, that actually does work. Okay, great. Well, kind of. Yeah, I'm going to attack with both. And I think I'm gonna. they're going to kill both my creatures. And then I'm going to Samwise back etchings. But I know they have the Agatha's Soul Cauldron. But I think there's a chance that they use the Soul Cauldron first on this robber. They kind of have to, to, to make this block make sense. To make their Jack Rabbit into a 2-3. And they're going to Mother of Runes <laughs> to give it pro red. All right, well, that was one of the ways that I had to win the game. That's really funny. All right, and Samwise. Samwise. Getting Kumano. All right, Kumano faces Kakazan for the win, huh? Up a game. Let's see if our sideboard has anything we care to bring in. Mm, Delayed Blast Fireball seems like it would be pretty good against most Luris decks. I don't know about Mind Collapse, though. Containment Priest is less likely to be great. And I don't think I need Satya here. All right, this looks solid to me. All right, game two. Well, this is a great hand. Turn one, Giver. Turn two, either Glimmerlands or Magda. And they have a tap land, so they're not starting on one. That's nice. Um... My guess is I should play Magda because if I play Glimmerlands to draw the card, I have to attack with Giver of Runes, and I feel like that's not as guaranteed. Whereas if I play Magda, I'll get a treasure next turn. I don't have a third land yet. It'd be nice to get to play Spellbinder or Rabble Master. We'll see what their two is here. It looks like a Walking Ballista. Uh, sure. <laughs> uh, do I want Magda? Yeah, I think I'll play Magda here. I've got a Giver of Runes to protect it. I do, I, I'm not able to uh, have Magda beat Ballista in a fight because if I attack and they block and I give it pro colorless, they ping it in response. But getting getting a, my third land off it or my or getting a treasure off it seems pretty important. And there's a chance also that I just flame slash the Ballista. Then if they ping Magda, I give it pro colorless and then get to attack with it. 
but we will see what they've got going here. They binned a smuggler's copter. Interesting. They're going to pass the turn. All right. Oh, Samwise is actually really nice. All right, so let's go attack with Magda. They block. I pass. They, they, they've got to pass two, and then I can just go Samwise, get back Magda. I think that's better than playing Glimmer Lens here, kind of for the same reason as before. And this locks in the two for one. I'll make Samwise harder to block. I don't think the Giver of Runes is going to be doing a ton of attacking. This just doesn't give them an opportunity to use removal quite as well. They can all still kill the, the Giver, but... Okay. Greaves into... What are they protecting with these Greaves? Into Vampire Hexmage? Sure. All right. <laughs> they, they've got a grieved up hex mage. I guess maybe they have a dark depths in their deck. Definitely could be the case. Um, kind of want to get rabble master going though. Maybe elite. Maybe elite spellbinder is better. Let's see what they've got. Okay. Like they could have a Wrath or something in hand. I don't really want to play into it. We have Ephemerate and two lands, neither of which are Dark Depths. All right. I guess I'll make Ephemerate more expensive. Ephemerate and a Luris deck. That... Look, this Luris deck's got Lightning Greaves, Vampire, Hex Mage, Ephemerate. I'm just going to say it doesn't represent all Luris decks. <laughs> also, if I draw a land at some point, ooh -wee. Kind of don't need one to win this game. It's more on what, what they draw. I guess they can put Luris into hand here, but at some point I'm just going to cast Delayed Blast Fireball. Mm, all right. That's a pretty good draw. They give it haste. And then they probably put Luris into hand. Yeah, Giver of Runes is a really good draw. Wow. All right. Giver of Runes with with protection is pretty good. Um, so I can't attack with Samwise anymore. This Fury is not going to do as much against Lightning Greaves. What's my best play here? I kind of think it's Glimmer Lens because next turn I would like to draw an extra card. And I'm going to slam for three in the air here. Mm, actually... Yeah, I'll attack with Samwise and give it pro black. They don't have anything in their hand to punish me for this. Obviously, they could draw something, but the giver can block. I'm basically offering the trade. And my guess is they're not going to take it. The trade, that is, that they'll just take five. Because next turn, they have Luris plus either Ballista or Copter with Giver up to protect it and Lightning Greaves. Oh, that's interesting. Greaves on Lures means delayed blast fireball. Uh, they can't protect the Lures. That's really funny. It looks like a ballista to me. Great. I just need to draw a land here. I might have to attack with two things to draw the land. All right, they're killing my thing. Oh, I guess the downside of using Giver was the ballista play. Not true. What are they gonna do here? Oh. Hmm. Oh, they're just tapping out now. Okay. I guess they have Greaves on, so they probably think they're pretty safe. All right. If I draw a land this turn, and I have two looks, then I probably just win. Otherwise, it gets quite a bit more difficult. All right. It's about to be turn six. I think drawing a land by then is reasonable. Boom, there we go. Delayed Blast Fireball. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That was pretty good. I, I I can't say I'm like the biggest Delayed Blast Fireball fan, but wow, this was good. <laughs> it's going to kill all three of their creatures, nug them for two. And then I'm going to hit them for probably just, I'm just going to hit them for six here. And then I have a handful of cards and they have one card in their hand. Or five, I guess, not six. Did draw a card off Glimmer Lens. Silent Clearing, immediately crack it. Mm -hmm. And they're not like 
dead this turn, but if they don't have anything this turn, it's going to be pretty difficult to win the game. Wow, if they had Greaves, Hexmage, Dark Depths, they could have hasted, hit me with a hasted 2020. That, yeah, that's pretty good. What do we got here? Uh, let's just rabble, rabble, rabble. Mm -hmm. Play Elegant Parlor. All right. 1-0. I don't really think this deck's going to go the distance, but let's see, right? All right. The perfect draw on the play. One, two, three, four here, which can't really ask for much more. I mean, I guess a mox or something, and hopefully they don't lotus me here. Soul Guide Lantern. I am okay with that. Draw. Robber. I think I'm just going to attack for three. I have a Fiery Confluence in hand. I feel like them killing my Giver of Runes is not that big of a deal. Or sorry, them killing my Robber. Not attacking with a Giver lets them go land, remove your Robber. But they could still kill the Giver, and I think I'd rather just get a point of damage. Plus, Island Soul Guide is not the most removal-coded opener. Well, they drew a Soul Ring, because I clearly would have played that turn one. So I, I Robber of the Rich them into a Soul Ring. That's nice. Um... I guess no matter what, I'm not getting a card off Robber this turn, so let's just go Elite Spellbinder. I'm going to mess him up with this Fiery Confluence. Well, maybe not. Oh, Mana Drain. <laughs> yep, this is this is the kind of thing <laughs> I was talking about. Like, I'm not that likely to beat Soul Ring, Mana Drain, Opal. We'll see. It depends what their play is here. Fiery Confluence very good against them. Like, I could blow up Soul Ring and maybe the thing they play this turn if they play an Artifact. If they play like a mere battle sphere, I can actually just go kill battle sphere, kill soul ring, deal one to everything. Which is pretty funny. We'll see. Mana drain leads to colorless, which leads to artifacts, which I think means that uh, Fiery Confluence has a pretty good chance of doing something, but they, who knows what they could do here. This could be like a time twister or something. They can play an academy and an upheaval or whatever. Julie, chill out. Metamorph? Oh, on the soul ring. Okay. Into workshop. Okay, that's a lot of mana. Mm, like I said, I don't get to rob or anything anyway. Now I think I might leave the giver back. Actually, let's just cast... I'm just going to destroy... Soul Ring, Mox Opal, Soul Ring. I, I could leave Mox Opal in play. That doesn't really seem like a good idea. Oh, taste it. <laughs> let's get in there. All right. I mean... This, this looks pretty good. Would, would like to find one more piece of action, but they had a lot of mana next last turn, didn't do anything. Now they have less mana. Oh, now they have an artifact to play? What is this? A oh, Mightstone Weakstone? Hmm. Eh. That's fine, but it also turns on the Robber of the Rich. So I feel like that's pretty good for me. They have three cards. Let's go Elegant Parlor. I'll keep Rebel on top. I'm just going to keep attacking with this Giver of Runes. All right, what did I hit? I hit their Academy. Well, they have Academy. Wow, Academy Workshop Soaring. Not going to be the easiest, but I do think I'm looking fairly good this game. Drawing Rabble Master. Next turn, I've got some pretty good attacks. Giver also means that if they play like a mere Battle Sphere or something, I can maybe get around it. Oh, okay. Well, they don't have Basalt Monolith, My is my guess, because that's the first thing they would have played. So they get to crack the clue. Okay, and pass. They have two cards. Rabble Master. I don't need to play the land yet. And now I don't attack with Giver, because now I attack with these three. All right, Robber, it's your time to do some work here. They hit Force of Will. <laughs> All right. It's unfortunate, because I would have also been fine with them drawing Force of Will, but... Right, they go to five here. I'm play my land in case. If I drew another land, there's a chance that not playing my land would have screwed me because of robber. All right. Well, they 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 have the the tools to do something really good here. Obviously, a basalt monolith is already good enough. Well, oof, gadgeteer is going to be a little tough, I guess. <coughs> or gadgeteer retrofitter. Nah, they probably have to have something else because I can give rabble master. Oh, I can't give it pro artifacts because 
They have a friend to get your now they have a shadow spear. Okay. This this robber of the rich has been horrible. It just keeps exiling their blanks and giving them good cards. Unlucky, really. Oh, what is this? Into time warp? No, I'm gonna lose now. I think that uh time warp into yeah, they even get an attack for two. Into a equip shadow spear and have like because retrofitter with friends that get it here is one tap make a creature two untap it and then the rest are unchanged but that's still a pretty good start how's oh, there here's, oh that's not basalt monolith i was ready to concede to that mm -hmm. oh, they're cracking their clues so they can pay one to make a thing and two to untap it so it costs three to make a token well, that's not so bad. I mean, they can also sack LED if they want to. So they can make a token. Make a token, make a token, make a token. They lose their cards in hand. I could give Rabble Master Pro Colorless, and then they have to block it with Gadgeteer if they want to block. The problem is the 1-1 one, one Goblins have to attack in their 3-4 lifelink, so maybe I just don't use the... Giver, oh, they're just going to attack to just lock in their life. Ah, that's smart. I don't know if that's good, but it's, I mean, it's, it's an intentional play. I, I assume they have some plan here. Oh, Cathar Commando is actually a really nice draw. All right. Attack with everything. Robber triggers. Oh, I have Force of Will up. That's really funny. I actually have Force of Will plus Cathar Commando up. That's hilarious. I hit Island again. Classic. All right, so they're gonna make a token. I'll let them, I'll pass. And then they're gonna untap Retrofitter. So I could blow it up now and then they untap it in response. I think a second token's okay. Because if they're going for the, if they're sacking the server to make a 4-4, that's a very different play. And then, okay, so now they're making another servo. So now when they go to untap it, I'll probably just blow it up. Oh, they're just blocking from here. Okay. Um, yeah, I guess I'll give Magda Pro Colorless. I'll pass. It didn't do anything else. Interesting. There are four. <sighs> kind of want to blow up the Shadow Spear, but I shouldn't do that. I should just. I guess I'll just pass. They're going to want to charge Relic at the very least. I think I'm going to play Cathar Commando blow up retrofitter I feel like retrofitter does the most damage here because I can't blow up gadgeteer obviously I would do that if I could okay I, I hope I get them with force of will like we're in a turn where they let me attack and then try to cast a spell and then I can boom hit him with robber but I don't think that's super likely manifold key all right I'm guess I'm glad I killed the retrofitter but They've got to have so many things that just win in the game here. Okay, hitting with the uh, gadgeteer. you got to do something else here. All right, cracking the clue. I mean, they're down to 14 cards in their deck, like... Untap the might stone? Into what? Oh. What is this? Is this like a portal? Now it's 11 mana? Oh, upheaval. And they have... All right, that's fine. They, they can just play like a million things now. Yeah, upheaval is one of the things. Because they have five mana left. They haven't played a land. They have eight mana with the workshop. And they go like Mightstone, Weakstone, Coalition Relic, Gadgeteer, uh, Manifold Key, Untap, whatever, whatever. Hmm... I want Mind Collapse to kill the Gadgeteer. Do I have anything in my head deck that's bad? I guess Containment Priest, I just haven't played against those decks. Uh, I could also put in 
Delayed Blast Fireball could maybe catch some retrofitter tokens off guard, but I don't feel like that's... I think I just want to make my deck as fast as possible. I kind of think I just put in Hired Claw. Well, I'd like to play first. Okay, it's a good hand. I had one, two, three, four on the play with the four being Fiery Confluence, and they still just rinsed me, but, you know, so it goes. So I go a Johnny into Rabbit here. Okay. And we'll get to Parlor. Graveyard Flame Slush. <laughs> yeah. I mean, this is another solid hand. There's definitely a chance they might not have good good ways to deal with some of this stuff. Since Mono Blue's not known for its great removal. If they just play Island Go, it's tough. Do I like play into Mana Drain? I really hope to draw like Cathar Commando. Oh, Kumano faces Kakazan's pretty interesting. Okay, they let that resolve. So I think what I'm just gonna do is hit for three here and pass, because I can still cast Unexpectedly Absent if they play something next turn. And this way they don't get to manager in my Jackrabbit. Okay, they're not playing anything. Oh, no they are. Trinket Mage. Um, I'm just gonna Absent in response. That way, I don't really want them drawing Trinket Mage. They can go get their Soul Ring. Then I'm going to play a Jackrabbit. It's going to be pretty big because the Kumano faces Kakazan. And next turn, I'm going to have a bunch of things in play plus a Fiery Confluence. All right, I think I win this game, <laughs> but we'll see. I mean, they, they have Soul Ring, they have Academy, they have Manager, and they have a lot of good cards. They do need to play something pretty effective right now because next turn I'm going to get it to attack for nine because remember this turns into a thing and then just kill them with Fiery Confluence, not to mention get four tokens. So, yeah, they're going to need to play something. I feel like they had Mana Drain in hand, and they weren't sure if, whether to play it or not, whether to play Trinket Mage or not, and then they decided to play Trinket Mage, but who knows? That could just be me wanting to have made a good play, you know? There goes the Soul Ring. Into Time Walk. It'd be funny if they had redrawn Trinket Mage, if that was their top card. Going to Mightstone Weakston. Oh, you got to kill the Jacked Rabbit now. All right, well, I'm still going to make a similar play, which is to cast Fiery Confluence. Destroy target artifact, destroy target artifact, deal two to each opponent. Yep. That's my plan here. It leaves me one short of a two turn clock, but it's just no reason to leave them with a double mana rock in play. That obviously is not a very good idea. This just makes all their upheavals and other expensive cards worse. All right, gonna have to win a game on the draw. I do not know how we're gonna do that, honestly. But, you know, what can you do? Workshop Battlesphere? Could be stuff to play they could make. Basalt Monolith, unsurprisingly they have that into Time Warp. That would, that would be pretty good. Oh, into Gadgeteer. But they don't have the mana. Oh, no, they do have the mana to go infinite now. They had uh, enough floating. All right, well, they have no colorless. Let's see what they draw. Or have, rather. Every artifact cycles now. And if they have Coalition Relic, they get colored mana. I can't just concede here. I do have to see what it is they're going to play. Wow, if they if they win here, it's it's gonna be impressive because it's just again like this wasn't a one drop, but I had a Johnny into Kumano into Jack Rabbit into Fiery Confluence, and that's like a pretty good sequence. Okay, so they went through their clue already. They're not even dead on my turn, which is the sad part. But I guess I can attack with Etching of Kumano and Cat Warrior, maybe, or maybe just Cat Warrior. All right. Oh, they're paying life. To metamorph, sure. Make another Friends of Gadgeteer, perhaps? If they have any more artifacts, the second Gadgeteer gets them two clues. They could also a Johnny to just have two blockers, but I kind of think Gadgeteer is nice. I don't know. They're down to four now? That's something. All right. 
Do they have the artifact already, or are they going to crack the clue and hope to draw it? I think they're cracking the clue and hoping to draw it. Oh, Sensei's Divining Top? Oh, I just lose now. They they get to draw a card with top, crack a clue, redraw top, play top, get two clues. They're just going to find a way to kill me. All right. Well, we're, we're heading back in. That was that was, that was was a little fast, but I, I just didn't think that deck was very good, and I lost to exactly what I was worried about, which was... A deck that had good cards in it like <laughs> it was doing more powerful things at a, at a hot, more consistent rate so let's try this again shall we all right time for the next draft where <laughs> again we're just gonna first pick a horrendous card like what is the best card in this pack gitaxian probe time warp <laughs> pyrokinesis recurring neighbor i'm just gonna take gitaxian probe i that pack is horrible and gave no real direction. I guess I could take Recurring Nightmare, but I just don't like starting with a card like that. I'm just going to start with Probe and uh, accept that I don't get a first pick. What can you do, right? <laughs> now, this is a pack. Uh, Gitaxian Probe, Saga, Gut, Oko, Marsh Flats. Or, sorry, I have a Gitaxian Probe, but there's a Saga, an Oko, a Gut, and a Marsh Flats. I think I might just take Oko. Not that I have the, the, the probe matters that much. Um, I don't know. It's early in the draft. Oko, Gut, and uh, Saga are all great cards. I don't think I want to take a Marsh Flats here. Mm. Oko's still really good. Let's just take Oko. I mean, Saga's great too if you get a good Saga deck. The problem with the Saga is if you don't have good targets, I don't really like taking Saga without having any good targets. Whereas if you open Mox or Soul Ring or something, or you already have like Mox Opal and Academy or, or, or something along those lines, but it's so easy for Saga to end up not getting played. Whereas Oko, it's pretty hard for this not to end up in your deck. It's pretty easy to splash. Prismatic Vista, Cryptic Command, Shell Dock, Crab, Coveted Jewel, I guess, Dark Ritual. I'll just take Prismatic Vista. It's a fine land and those cards are not anything special. All right, and here we've got like a Lotus Petal, a Baleful Strix, a Snapcaster Mage, I guess a Zagoth Triumph, Inti, Ovenwald Oddity. I mean, there's some decent cards here. I might just take Lotus Petal. It's pretty open-ended. Petal's good. Casting a turn to Oko is great. I don't, I don't like taking Snappy without having good stuff, though. I guess Probe Snapcaster is kind of nice, but I think just taking Petal works here. I, I really don't have much of a clear direction yet, so I'd rather just keep myself a little more open. Oko is obviously the most committal card I have. The other three are effectively colorless. So we'll see if something powerful emerges. If I get a sneak attack this pack or a flash or something, yeah, that's that's a direction, you know. Snapcaster and Inti, they, they don't quite give the same guiding principles here. I mean, I love Gaia's Cradle, but it does not look like a spot where I should take it. I could take Days, just trying to settle into generic blue. And maybe Leovold comes back. One, two, three, four, five. I could also just take Once Upon a Time. Actually, I should probably just do that. Once Upon a Time is a really good card. And again, it, this is a little more committal than it makes me want to be green, but that's not so bad. Oh, wow, this is kind of tough because there's Breeding Pool, Miscalculation, and Natural Order. I really like Natural Order. But I don't have any of the green elves or anything. I kind of feel like I should just take Breeding Pool and still be relatively open. Miscalc isn't so so good that I, I'm worried about passing up on it. All right. This would be a good time walk start if I could open that. <laughs> Probably going to... What, what have my last four first picks been? Uh, like So far in this video, I first picked Containment Priest. Uh, a fetch land. I think another, it was like another fetch land or something along those lines. <laughs> and Cataxian Probe, it's really something. Oh, that's a late Emrakul. I think I'll take that because now that means no one else has probably taken Channel. I could still be Channel. I could maybe see Sneak. Malcolm is good, but I, I think Emrakul is actually a card that can, can really be impactful and win games. I think that this this is a, the start to maybe going down that road. Here, Dark Slick Shores and Rafine's Tower are both okay. I'm not going to take Vindicate. I don't think I need Yavimaya. Trinket Mage is just okay. I'm not going to take Reclaimer. I'm not going to take Elspeth. So it really is, do I want to take one of the lands or like Thought Scour? Probably not Thought Scour. Or do I take just take Trinket Mage? I think I might just take Dark Slick Shores. Having an untapped land is pretty nice. I, I might regret not taking Rafine's Tower, but I feel like this deck's more likely to end up Salt Eye than to have White in it. So I'd rather just take the Dark Slick. Oh, and here, there's an Odawara, but I could, I could also just take Ulamog, cut off the Eldrazi. 
Yeah, there's also Courser, but I don't think Courser is very good in Recurring Nightmare, which I don't really seem to be set up for. Whoa, this pack actually has good cards in it. Um, wow. I think I'm going to just take Toxic Deluge. Deluge is great. I have a Dark Slick Shores and a Vista. I don't have enough fetches yet for Death Right, and I could could get there, but Deluge fits really well in this kind of deck, and I don't think I want Kavu. Relic of Soren is also a kind of nice card, but I think that uh, De having one Wrath in, in like a combo deck can be really effective, especially a kind of cheap one. And then here, I don't think I'm going to play Risen Reef. We're not really a Dark Ritual deck. I might take Cryptic. I kind of have the mana for it. Crabomination is also solid, but Cryptic Wheeling is kind of nice. Uh, yeah. Sultai combo of some kind. Oh, now I can take Corpse Dance. I have Emrakul for Corpse Dance. I don't think I want Oddity. It doesn't seem like I'm that kind of green deck. Oh, I could. Do I take Shallow Grave or Leovold? Huh, that is that is close. I think I'm going to take Shallow Grave. I don't have any draw sevens and I have a couple of draws. All right, I'll take an elf. <laughs> Doomsday, interesting to keep in mind. All right, well, that was pack one. Can't wait to see my first pick here. Oh, it's going to be Flash. That's nice. Haven't seen any of the good Flash targets. And Flash is actually a discard outlet for Emrakul. You can Flash Emrakul, it just dies, and then Shallow Grave it or Corpse Dance it. Okay. Easy Flash. All right, that 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 is nice. Oh, and followed up with the Thought Seize. Thought Seize is great. Dismember is good. Frantic Search is good, especially with all the Corpse Dance stuff. But Thought Seize can also do that. You can just Thought Seize yourself. If you're Shallow Graving an Emrakul, that's usually worth it. And it's also really good disruption. All right, so these, these packs have been good at least. All right, this pack, <laughs> there's a Eureka to keep that might wheel. I, I'm kind of thinking I just take Overgrown Tomb. I think Jace is just not that good anymore. I, I'd play it if I got it most likely, but Overgrown Tomb helps bring the Soul Time mana base together. If I get Channel, it's going to be really nice having a Black Green Duel. And maybe Brainstorm comes back if it does, doesn't. Kitsa is also a discard outlet, but I haven't found... Putting Kitsa in this deck when it's like your only creature is just a little bit dicey because they often can just kill it. Um, I do like LED, but not much of an LED deck. Tamiyo for that time walk we're going to open. I think I just take Duress. This looks like a good Duress deck. I mean, if I just get some good creatures to flash in, like, this looks like a great blue-black, maybe Splash Oko. Maybe, maybe once upon a time if I have the mana for it. Just like a blue-black combo deck. I think those decks can be great. And here, oh man, Misty Rainforest versus Reanimate, I th and it's also Bloodstained Mire, but I think I just take Misty. It's Tryland. I don't really have much of a Reanimate. I already have Shallow Grave and Corpse Dance, so all right, Misty it is. Oh, there we go. There's the channel. All right, I hope that Imperial Seal wheels that we took a Duress over. Definitely slamming channel over Echo Vions, but we didn't go the Leovold path. Oh, and now Grist. Grist is just like a totally fine way to interact, and... Yeah, nothing else here is even very close. All right, this deck actually has a chance. It's not like I've opened much better, I don't think. It's mostly that I saw a late Emrakul and Spect on it. Now I have Emrakul, Ulamog, Channel. I also have Shallow Grave, Corpse Dance if I get a few more discard outlets, hopefully. And then I have Flash if, if hopefully that also materializes. But a good Flash Channel deck, that does not need power to, to compete because you can just easily win on turn two regardless. Obviously, power would make it better, but we will see. Oh, you can also Once Upon a Time into Grist, by the way. That's a kind of nice little combo. Oh, Torsten. Perfect. That's for Flash, baby. All right, passing on Eternal Witness and Blood Chief's Thirst, whatever. Cards I don't care about. Ooh, and here, Kaito's actually kind of nice because Kaito is a discard outlet for the Shallow Grave stuff. And because it phases out, you can play Kaito. It's going to survive a turn. Next turn, you just plus one it and boom. Shallow Grave or Corpse Dance Emrakul or sometimes Ulamog. Corpse Dance Ulamog nugs them for 20 cards in their deck. Sometimes that'll win the game, but often it won't. Oh, and Frantic Search wield. We're really doing it now. All right, that, that red-white deck, that was just the warm-up. Frantic Search is so good here because not only is it the best discard outlet because it costs zero mana since you just discard your Emrakul, untap your lands, and Corpse Dance it, it also fixes your mana for channel. If you have one green source and three other lands, you can float a green, Frantic Search, untap the green, and then boom. Oh, and Kitsa came back. Hmm, Kitsa or Eureka? I think I'll take Kitsa. I, I don't I don't like Eureka without Vaultborn Tyrant as much. Eureka putting an Emrakul, I don't find to have that great of a chance of winning. So I think I'll just take a good discard outlet. And I could use more twos. 
here. I don't think I have the mana for a Skuller. White doesn't make any sense. Huali is okay, but I have a bunch of threes, and I think my mana is pretty good. I'm going to take Tamiya, which I probably won't play, but if I open Time Walk, I'd be really happy that I did. I have a Doomsday in my sideboard too, which I guess could do something. Oh, you know, this Elvish Mystic, now that I have Channel my deck, my guess is I'll, I'll probably want to play Elvish Mystic. I have a bunch of three mana Planeswalkers to, to play. I'm really glad I took that Overgrown too, and the Dark Six Shores also ended up working out really well. It's nice when you have the luck. Like, when you're deciding between two cards and they're pretty close, it is kind of luck when you take one and then get the cards that make that pick good. Mm, one sec. Consider is a moderately good cantrip. Nothing too special. Kind of nice with Kitsa. I think I'll take V-Click, probably sideboard it. Against Control Decks, it's really nice to have that. Oh, I might play this. But to go back to what I was saying earlier... It is luck when you've got two cards that are basically equivalent and you just like, like I take the Emrakul, like let's say Emrakul was in a pack with something really close. I took Emrakul, then got Channel. I could have taken the other card and, you know, like I took Dark Slick Shores over Rafine's Tower. It was very close. I didn't really have any black cards at the time, but maybe I could have ended up being Domain and really wished I had done the other way. It just worked out nicely how, how these picks have gone. And that's kind of what you need to, to do to 4 a draft, to be honest. Basking Ruwala, discard it to Kitsa. Wow. All right. Could we get a little Lotus? A little Time Walk? Could use something like that. Could also use more Flash things. Well, there's an Archon and a Woodfall and an Ulamog and an Atali. All right, well, message received. I think I take Archon because Shallow Grave and Corpse Dance Archon is incredible. And, well, I'm not taking Woodfall Primus because I think that one actually has a pretty good chance of wheeling. Ulamog is better with channel, but I have two channel things. I think I want another thing that's at least plausible with Flash and good with Corpse Dance. So I think I take Archon here. Honestly, there's a chance I get to choose between World uh, Woodfall Primus and Ulamog when it comes back. So I think just taking Archon covers my bases more. I don't know. I get, that's another one of those picks where, like, depending on how the draft ends up, I, I could have wished I'd done it another way, you know? Could use, at this point, another Reanimate. I would definitely be happy to. At some point, I think a piece of power would be nice. Obviously, it's not going to happen this draft, you know, unless unless the person passing me open two. But this deck, this deck can win without power. I hope. <laughs> now there's Gristlebrand. Uh, I'm kind of inclined to take like generous Ent. It can get Overgrown Tomb or Breeding Pool. Bitter Triumph is also kind of nice as a discard outlet. I have one, two, three, kind of four discard outlets. Yeah, let's just take the mana thing. I don't think I need to take the Gristlebrand here. If this was a Vaultborn Tyrant, that'd be a different story, but I think I just take Generous Ent and see what comes back. Something's probably going to come back out of that pack. This pack, hmm, maybe I just Currency Converter. It's good with other discard outlets while also being its own discard outlet, and I think Seder Wayfinder, Ledger Shredder are cards that could just come back. All right, I'm in for Converter, passing a Wasteland. This isn't much of a Wasteland deck. Here, uh, it's got to be an easy Watery Grave. I've got it, plenty of playables already. Watery Grave is nice. It completes the Shockland Triumvirate of Breeding Pool, Watery Grave, Overgrown Tomb. Obviously, be better if it was just uh, Tropical Island, Underground Sea Bayou, but, you know, I'm ha happy enough. Here, Birds is actually kind of nice. I think I might be able to play Birds, but maybe I just take Collective Brutality. It's kind of nice with Converter. Sets up these things. Yeah, I don't just don't think this is a birds type deck. There's also survival, but I don't think I have enough creatures to really make that work. Three more picks. Would love to see a Vaultborn Tyrant. Would love to see a Counterspell, maybe. I don't think I want to play this Elvish Mystic all that much. This is looking good. This is a pretty solid deck. I'm not sure if Cryptic's going to make it. Oh, World Spine? World Spine Flash, baby. We are doing it. That's just the best card to flash in in general. So I'll take that over Hedge Maze, Blooming Marsh. I mean, honestly, one of those might even come back. I kind of feel like all of our stuff works. We have two great channel things, two great flash things. Archon is one of the better cards to Corpse Dance or Shallow Grave. Bunch of discard outlets. Don't have a tutor. Like a mystical tutor would have been a nice pickup. But we've got like this Lotus Petal to speed us up. We have Thought Season Duress. Yeah, yeah, I, I like this. Oh, wow. Sneak Attack? I don't have any red lands in my sideboard. I have a Prismatic Beast and Lotus Petal. Sneak's got to be too good here. Sneak is just, I'll just cut the Cryptic and play the Sneak, and my mana will be a little worse. Maybe I cut Kitsa at this point, too. I don't know. If I can pick up uh, one red land that I can fetch with either Misty or Generous Scent, like, I guess Taiga's already gone. I don't think Stomping Ground is. I think Sneak is just too good for me to pass up here. 
And here there's a Wish Claw, but I think Bone Shards is better. Bone Shards is a really good discard outlet, and I have a lot of creatures, so let's just take Bone Shards. I don't think I want to play Exploration either. Um, kind of want to take Kits out. Again, my deck's now very good against removal. I have no good removal targets. Like, sure, you can, like, kill my Grister Kaito creatures or whatever. And I have Mana Acceleration with Talisman and Lotus Petal. Right now this is 15 land plus Lotus Petal Generous Ent. And Once Upon a Time, Gitaxian Probe. Yeah, that actually might work. My curve is very low, because it's not like I'm casting all these things. My most expensive card is the Sneak Attack. Okay, so Woodfall Primus didn't come back, but Itali didn't. So did Ketria Trium. Mm, I kind of just want to take Ketria Trium. It's fetchable by multiple lands. Yeah, that's got to be great. I've got five creatures already. That's pretty good. All right, all right. Here, we're not a Time Spiral deck. Definitely a Bitter Triumph deck. All right, I'll take that. Just to cut a card again. Hmm. Is there any chance I cut Grist? Don't think I want to cut Kaito. Grist might just be cuttable. It's a good card, but I don't have a lot of other creatures. I think I'd rather just keep mono discard outlets. Okay, Oliphant came back, and I can get Ketria Triumph, and I'm going to play one mountain. Yep, that's great. Better than Seder Wayfinder, I think, because it works out really nicely with a Currency Converter. Turn one Converter, turn two Cycle, one of these things is pretty good. Here, I'm going to... I guess side in Tarmogoyf maybe in some matchups. Oh, Shifting Woodland. That's a great pickup. I don't want Survival. I want Shifting Woodland. Oh, and Blooming Marsh for free? Green Suns. <laughs> Last pick, Green Suns. All right, th this is a real deck. All right, so 14 lands. Really 16 lands plus Petal Once Upon a Time Probe. I think that's actually fine in Talisman. So I get to add one of each basic and an extra... Drum roll, please. Let's see. <laughs> I don't have a ton of blue cards right now. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine blue sources is pretty good, plus the, the island. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine black. I don't want, I, I need the one mountain. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten green. I guess I'll put another black then. All right, let's see how this goes, huh? All right, time for round one. We're on the draw. Oh yeah, this is a nice hand. I mean, this is just an early Emrakul here. Oh, another cool thing you can do with Currency Converter plus Emrakul is that uh, if you discard Emrakul to Converter, you can exile it, stack it so you exile it and don't reshuffle the Emrakul. Then later you can tap the Converter to put the Emrakul in. It would be nice to draw an untapped land. Oh, wow, once upon a time owned me there, but this is fine. Pass the turn, and what I probably want to do, honestly, I probably just use Currency Converter still. I don't really know what they're up to. But if I draw, I have to use a pedal, but if I draw a black land, well, maybe it's better to just, well, we'll see what they're doing first, I guess, but, oh. Okay, uh, yeah, I guess that's fine then. I mean, if I draw a, bl a black land, I can Emrakul them this turn. Oh, so yeah, that, that's what I'll be doing. Uh, let's go Collective Brutality, discard and drain them for two. Mm -hmm. Discard Emrakul, cast Shallow Grave. All right, and I get to look at their hand. Oh, take that memory lapse? Actually, I'm probably going to take iteration. I don't know why they showed me their hand. Oh, there we go. Okay, so playing against a counterspell deck, that means I do want this Vendillion click. And I'm a little less, I don't know their deck, but I'm a little less likely to want Toxic Deluge from what I'm seeing right here. So, I mean, th that, this is why I like Flash and Emrakul and Channel and all that stuff is like, you can just beat people so easily if you just cast one of those cards and just ends the whole game. So I, I do like it. All right. On the draw once more here. Let's see what they're up to. What do I got? Well, I'm going to hope this converter works because the converter is how I'm going to get to red mana most likely. Okay. It's a fast start. If they uh, Thieving Skydiver me, this hand becomes horrible. <laughs> 
I mean, if I draw blue, I've got some things. Oh man, that is a thieving sky. No, it's not a thieving skydiver, good news. <laughs> I guess I could have tapped it in response, but they're probably not discarding this turn. Oh, Prismatic Beast is actually not too bad. I'm gonna play a tapped Overgrown Tomb and then see what I need to do. I probably just need to get a blue so I can start casting my Planeswalkers. Man, they get to steal my Converter and then use it with Dac. Oh, unfortunate. I feel like I probably just want a Kaito here. I don't know. Or I could just draw Flash. That'd be nice too. All right, they discarded beside you. They discarded Ponder. I don't like that. That's really one of their worst cards. That must mean they either have a great hand or are, they know they're gonna tap out like the next two turns. Oh, this looks like a smirking Spelljacker to me. I'm, I'm not into it. <laughs> what land do I play? I guess I just play the Blue Marsh, that's funny. I mean, we'll see, maybe I'm wrong. And maybe I can't beat smirking Spelljacker anyway, but like, like really? Discard Ponder and just do nothing? And then they just tap to put a rogue into play. Yeah, I'm suspicious here. I'm not sure what my plan is. It's gonna be iteration. They still have Spelljacker mana up this turn because they can use the currency converter to make a treasure, assuming they hit a land drop, which if they're casting iteration, it'd be pretty hard not to. All right, they hit Bonehorde Dracosaur. Oh. So they're casting that this turn? That means if I draw a Lotus Petal, we get to play Sneak and sneak in probably Torsten, but we'll see. I also might just go Oko, make your Bonehorde Dracosaur into a 3-3. Three, three. It's kind of weak, but I don't know. I guess drawing a black green land was not ideal. All right, they discarded Skydiver. Now that I know they have Dak and Skydiver, I think I'm just gonna side out the Currency Converter. It seems so bad to just give them a Currency Converter. Like, this game would have been so much easier if I just didn't play that card. They're up, like, three cards because of it. Hex Drinker? Okay. Huh. Weird, but okay. I guess they're not tapping it. I mean, they don't... Oh. I guess the, the answer is I just cast Duress first because they probably have a counter in hand. <laughs> Duress not even good against the currency converter they stole from me. <laughs> They look like they're a pretty good red blue deck. I don't know what's up with this uh, hex drinker exactly. They're making a treasure. Oh, do they have cryptic last turn? Is is the card they have? My deck also has Thoughtseize, Duress, Vendillion, Click, so I kind of feel good about my gameplay against counter spells. Counter target spell draw a card. All right. Um, I'm gonna have to get lucky to win this anyway. So let's just go. Kaito, plus one. It's a red source. All right, I'm just going to discard Oko. Oko's not getting me out of this game. So I could cast Sneak next turn. I'm going to take a bunch of damage, but if I can get some sneaking in, it'd be pretty nice if I draw like a Shallow Grave Corpse Dance. I guess the thing is, Corpse Dancing, World Spine Worm, or Torsten is really not going to win me the game. So this game looks like it's pretty far out of control, but we'll see. All right, Dakarino here. See what they discard. All right, forest and mana confluence. Sure. Jules, Julie, good talk. All right. Well, we'll be going to game three soon enough, I suppose. Whoa, they need a treasure right now. What are they doing over there? It costs so much mana. So they have cryptic and memory lapse. <laughs> Keen-eyed curator. I guess they're splashing it because, yeah, sure, because I, I shallow grave them, but <laughs> that's, that's funny. Under time warp. All right, all right. Mm, yeah, I mean, I could take out Talisman and Currency Convert. A Lotus Petal's fine. I just won't play it till I need, need to use it. Just putting like Kitsa and Grist, just more cards I can play. I think that's reasonable. Um, maybe actually instead of Grist, maybe I just want another land. Probably like another blue if I side it in Vendillion Click. All right, I'll do that instead because I'm taking out the Talisman. All right, on the play, 
Any any Emrakuls? No, Mulligan that hand. <sighs> yeah, I guess I have to keep. Uh, do I put Ulamog back? Do I put Sneak Attack back? I don't think I put World Spine because it works really nicely with Flash. I could. I could keep Ulamog. No, I'm gonna put Ulamog back and maybe it ends up being really bad because I find channel, but I feel like this is what I wanna do. And then now I'll take Breeding Pool, sure. Okay, let's draw a flash, huh? I do have Oko here. And then if I draw a red source, I can go Oko into Sneak is a pretty decent amount of pressure. Obviously, if I just draw a flash, I would just main phase flash, make three worms, say go and be like, good luck, so. Let's hope I do that. I don't know. I'm all looking once. Let's see. Probe, huh? Archon is not the draw. Their hand is all lands, remand, and bone horde dracosaur. Okay. So they're, and they kept the card on top. That's uh, quite the keep. Um, I think I'm just going to duress them. They're gonna remand it. I don't get to recast it, but I think if I play Oko, they can still remand it. I don't know. They kept a card on top. There's a decent chance it's a spell. I kind of feel like next turn, next turn what I'll do is I'll play Oko if I don't draw a land. And if I do draw a land, maybe I'll duress first. It's, whoa, mana confluence? Why? Oh, into keen-eyed curator. Okay, that's fair, I guess. It doesn't do that much here. Oh, lotus petal. It's gonna be good with sneak, but I need to draw red land first. Let's just go Oko. So right now there's land, instant, sorcery. So they can't make keen-eyed curator big yet. So I think I'm just gonna go Oko plus. I might have to Dracosaur or Oko the Dracosaur. If I draw a red land here, I'm in great shape because I get to sneak in an Archon and that probably just wins me the game. They're gonna start eating my cards. They get to attack Oko, which is unfortunate because I don't get to steal their keen eyed curator, but saves me some damage. They're still a turn away from playing Dracosaur unless they drew a Mox. It'll be unfortunate. All right, any mountains, any mountains or prismatic vistas. Got to attack Oko here. Yep. Oko got hit, I draw. <laughs> mm, let's duress here, I think. They have cryptic command. I guess they could cryptic bounce, counter bounce Oko, but I kind of want to know what they're doing before deciding. I mean, maybe I should have Oko plus one on the keen eyed curator. I'm not sure. I know this doesn't even seem that good. Okay, they have the cryptic. They are bouncing the Oko. All right. This play didn't even work if I have land in hand, but you know. Dress down, they have all lands and a Dracosaur. All right. I mean, it's just going to come down to whether I draw a red land at some point here or channel or flash. I have the cards for all of them. They're gonna play Dracosaur. <laughs> it actually didn't work out that badly. I mean, I guess the Keenite Curator can get pretty big, but I can just Oko the Dracosaur now. And then I have a couple turns at least. All right, I don't need to see their hand. They have a million lands. And I just need to draw a red land or one of my combo cards. The one thing that doesn't work is if I draw, oh, they drew Minskin Boo? Actually, hold on. I think I'm gonna sack this food, but I'll wait to see what they do. Yeah, that makes things a lot worse for me. Well, if I draw Redland or I draw Flash, Channel actually does still work, I think. I go to 14, yeah. <laughs> channel like barely works, but it still does. Here we go, huh? <laughs> uh, uh, all right, let's go Oko. 
Make a keynote curator lose its abilities. They can't quite kill me here. They can attack me for 10, or they can attack me for seven and then throw the Dracosaur at me to put me to two. I still could win the game with a sneak. <laughs> Trying to do click was really bad. <laughs> They can also draw four cards off Boo, which is probably going to be enough for them to have a counterspell next turn. But, you know, what can you do? I don't know. I'm mulliganed. Kept, I think, a fine hand and have really not drawn well since then. And they've got what looks like a pretty solid teamer deck. So there we go, you know. All right. They just plussed Minsk on Boo. Well, I actually kind of like that. Them drawing cards, I think, would have been harder to beat. Obviously, I don't really like what's going on here, no matter what, but are they attacking Oko? They really don't need to attack Oko, I don't think, but yeah, they're hitting me for 10. I'm at four. If they don't play Bonehorde Dracosaur here, it's kind of bad news, because that means they have an instant. That could also explain them not using Minsk and Boo to draw cards. Oh, are they sending in... Are they playing the Dracosaur? Okay, they drew a Mox, sure. Yeah, if they're tapping Mana Confluence, they're probably playing Bonehorde Dracosaur. All right, red land for the Miracle Save. Oh, Mountain. Petal. I mean, if they have a counter, they have a counter, whatever. Sneak Attack. And now... Hmm. <laughs> what do I sneak in? It's actually not clear to me. I'm at four. If I sneak an Emrakul, that doesn't work. I guess I just have to sneak an Archon. So let's sneak, put an Archon. I sack something. Oh, I'm just going to eat all of, not all of their things, but a good amount of them. Because what I'm going to do is probably Oko the Dracosaur here. Let's see. Um, yeah, because what I do is I make that into an elk. Oh, does that even work? That's disappointing. It doesn't. It doesn't actually work. Because I can attack Minsk and Boo. Yeah, and then they sack the Minsk and Boo, and then I take ten. Damn. I even drew the mountain. Ugh. The problem was Emrakul did not kill them. World Spine Worm is not good enough. I could have just attacked Minsk and Boo. The problem is, no, it still wouldn't work because then if I Oko the, the Boo, it just gets bigger. Okoing this, yeah, all right. Damn, I guess it was a turn too late. Ugh. Painful, but uh, there goes my run for today. I'll be playing some more of these. Probably won't record. Well, maybe I'll record more, who knows. In any case, That'll do it for today, your, your daily dose of watching me <laughs> get shellacked over and over. But you know what? The title turn, the title turn. I, I even drafted two very different decks, and I don't know, I feel like I read the signals well for this deck. I think this deck is pretty good. I mean, I had a turn three Emrakul in game one, and then I didn't really assemble anything. But I had Flash, Channel, Sneak. It was kind of a sketchy sneak of the mana situation, for sure. But also Shallow Grave Corpse Dance with a ton of discard outlets. I mean, this is just a solid deck. And then I, my first deck, it was just a mid Boros deck that lost to a powerful deck. I don't know. I don't really feel like that first deck could have gone any all that differently. I didn't really, I didn't really see any good directional cards or powerful cards. But that'll do it for today. I've taken my lumps, and uh, maybe so you don't have to. <laughs> Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. It helps out the channel, and you won't miss a single draft.